Okay, uh, first thing, when we started to deploy DNSSEC in uh, 2005, we really started to also define a DNSSEC policy statement from the beginning where we were in a situation that we didn't really know what to put in it. What's important for people to know about how to trust .se and how to manage about how we manage our keys. So we had to um, just make up a document and try to be as, as thorough as possible back then. But during the time, we have considered or realized rather that people are asking for that kind of document just to know uh, the details in some ex extent about how a TLD or any other organization that registers domains do handle the keys and uh, DNSSEC overall. So what we did, me and a couple of friends, I'll get back to that, we have started to write a policy framework, a DPS policy framework, where you find the headlines and the sections and what should be in each section when you write such document just to make sure that you can harmonize these kind of documents so people can you know, recognize the content when they read one so they can compare different TLDs and registries. So that is the URL to the RFC draft. And the authors are, except for myself, Fredrik Ljunggren from Korea, a Swedish consultant, security consultant company, uh, who are actually also working with the root signing project. And it's also Tomofumi Okubo from VeriSign, who is actually very used to write CPSs, which is a different kind of policy statement document when you offer certificates. And the status of this framework draft is um, we have a second draft, and we are working. We have not get so much of feedback from the DNS OP working group, but we have got some, and we are trying to work it out and put it into this RFC draft, and we expect it to be on last call very shortly now. So, what is a DPS? It is a document that establish, defines the establishment and management of keys to be used of a TLD or a second level domain, wherever you have this kind of registry with a lot of domains. Um, it describes the verification process for the links between a domain, between the domain and the public key, and a physical or legal entity who is the registrant of the, that domain. And also it has to make a connection to the name service provider, which many times are um, a registrar, of course, but not always. It's not necessary, but you need to have some sort of link to that contact as well for that domain, because it is the, re the name service provider that actually runs DNSSEC for the registrants. And the document contains a brief description of the veri verification procedures. We used to have a very manual procedure where we actually called up the customer to make them confirm that they have put in a certificate, an individual certificate, in our keyman tool, and you know, it's a lot of work. So we were quite slow on marketing when it comes to DNSSEC from the beginning. We didn't want to have a lot of customers from the start because we didn't, couldn't manage it. Um, anyway, <coughs> The whole idea behind the DPS is to enable the trusting parties to determine on what level, how far can we go when trusting, for instance, .se and the DNSSEC management. And key management, for those who are familiar with encryption, you know that there's a lot of different things that you have to think about when you need to protect keys that are important to you. So it's not only that you put the keys somewhere and you put them into the resolvers and everything's said and done. It's a lot of work behind the protection of, of the keys. Uh, 
Uh, and why we put up a DPS was from the beginning, people asked us about that kind of information. So we said, instead of answering all those questions on the phone or email, we put it together in a specific document. And the whole idea is to provide some transparency to the relying parties and to gain trust, of course. So that block of text is what it says in the RFC draft. And you can read it yourself. It is to provide means for the relying parties to evaluate the trust and strength of the chain registries may choose to publish DNSSEC practice statements, comprising statements of critical security controls and procedures relevant to relying parties. And it also, um, from the beginning, we put it as a policy statement. But this time, when we revised it, since we now are changing into open DNSSEC, we also are revising our DPS, which means that we have changed from going, going from a policy document to more of a practice statement. So you differ between policy and practice. Uh, and the policy uh, part should more specifically be for our regulator to put up a policy statement. How do we want the registry to manage DNSSEC? And the practice statement is a reply on that policy. So here's who should publish a DPS. The registry is on different levels of the DNS hierarchy. It's not that hard to understand. The root will have one. The TLDs have their own. All of them who have deployed DNSSEC already, they have a, a DPS. Uh, but it differs quite a lot. And also, as I mentioned before, large registrars who are performing signer of customers' domain. Say, for instance, we have a large company which manage domains for all the subsidiaries or different departments, they might need a DPS for internal use or for the customers. And those who should be interested in reading a DPS is high value domain holders. For instance, if I am a bank and I decide to sign my domain, uh, I would be interested in how strong the chain tr trust chain will be and that I have then I have to need to know about the what the parent does with their keys uh, the trusting parties and of course the DNS community who will run all these resolvers so the motivation behind the framework is that we want to support the harmonization of DNS policy and practice statements and it's also considered an assistance to those poor guys who are <laughs> sitting behind the desk trying to put, put together that kind of document, which I did the first time, knowing nothing about what should I put in there at all. Um, and the increased transparency may have a positive effect on security controls at registries overall, in general, because it has forced us to think very carefully about the security issues internally. Uh, and the, f the content is an outline of topics that should be covered in a DPS. And within every single part, single topic, it is an explanation of what it is, what it should tell, and how to understand it. We do not suggest security controls on DNSSEC parameters because that is something different. It's outside the scope of this document. So this is .s's DPS, which is totally changed from the last one. It's completely rewritten, um, but it is in conformance with the RFC draft this time. Even if you shouldn't write documents in conformance with the draft, but we will have this DPS anyway, even though it, this will not, should it not be RFC, we will still have the need of a DPS, so it doesn't matter really. Uh, we published it under the CC license, Creative Commons, because we, we do really like people to, to use it to, to for their own purposes, because I think a, very, an, a good example is always nice to have. 
but it's not put up on our, on our website yet because we wait until we publish our uh, KSK, the new one. But it will be. And we're also waiting for a reconstruction of our uh, entire website, which will take place, I think, tomorrow or something. So we won't be sure. I don't want to publish an address or a link that won't work tomorrow. So I have to make sure first that it's all right. We do publish all the DNSSEC relevant information on our website. Um, and I believe that the address we have here will be the one used. But I'm not sure, so don't take it too hard. You will, you will notice. Um, the notifications that we do send out is an email list, DNSSEC announce list. And you should be on it if you are interested to have updates from .se regarding DNSSEC. So you, well, everyone is welcome to sub subscribe to it. We publish the KSKs, of course, in the form of a DNS key and a DS record as follows. IANA, I don't know if you are aware of, IANA is running an interim trust anchor repository while we are waiting for the road zone to get signed. They offered to put up an ITAR where everyone could put in their, or every TLD actually could put in their case case, the public part, just to make sure that there's one single place where everyone who is interested to put it into their resolvers could put, can get it, which is very intelligent. But we don't have, all those keys do not have a signature from a parent, obviously, since this road zone isn't signed, but they were all there. Um, and we also have a, on the website where Patrick told us the PDP signed text file uh, on an HTTPS protected server. Um, of course, we will put it di directly in the road zone when available. We have constructed an emergency KSK because OpenDNSSEC have some, some different roles and responsibilities that you have to take care of. You need to have security officers and you need to have system administra administrators. And the security officers must be of a number that, you know, you can allow people to go on holiday, uh, be sick, on parental leave or anything else. But still, everything might happen, so we have this extra, extra security, emergency KSK, um, and also we have an extra, extra emergency security officer. But the emergency KSK is will be taken into use if we suspect our KSK to be have been uh, compromised in any way. So we will also uh, we will publish that part as well, so people know what to go from and to when that happens, or if that happens. But that is to make sure that we will have the possibility to very, very quickly change the KSK if that's needed. Uh, the PGP, PGP key you will find also at that address, and that works, I check that. The content. It's a lot about operational requirements. It's about management, operational and physical control, uh, technical security control, zone signing, compliance audit, and legal matters. That is basically the general parts of the DPS. Uh, and the operational requirements, it sets all these different roles and responsibilities that I mentioned. I make I will make sure that it will be available for you if you want to, um, even though it's not really published on our official website yet. But if you want, it will be in a couple of days from now. So I think that was about all. Since you are, I don't believe any of you are policy making people or more from the technical department. But I do urge you to tell people when you get back home, if we are going to 
deploy DNSSEC in our TLD. We need to have a DPS because people want it from us. It's not because I tell you it's... You will get the question, how do you manage the keys? How safe are you? How, how long, in, in, to what extent can we trust your routines and operational and physical security and who looks after you and that kind of questions. 